Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hi, welcome back to the lectures on engineering mathematics 1 and today's we will learn Taylor's polynomial and Taylor series. So, these are the topics we will cover, we will start with the Taylor's polynomial and then go coming back to this Taylor series from the Taylor's polynomial and some worked out examples. So, this Taylor's formula which is a generalization of the mean value theorem or the Cauchy mean value theorem which we have learned in the last lecture. So, we assume that this function here f has all the derivatives up to the order n plus 1 in some interval which contains the point x is equal to x 0. Having this we wish to find this polynomial p n x of degree n with the conditions that this polynomial satisfies that p n x the polynomial at x is equal to 0 is equal to the function value at 0. The second that the first derivative of this uh, polynomial is equal to the first derivative of the function. The third condition the second derivative of this polynomial at this point x 0 is equal to the second derivative of the function at the x 0 and so on. So, what we assume basically that all these uh, derivatives the, the function value itself the first derivative the second derivative and nth derivative they all are equal to this derivative of the polynomial. So, having these conditions what do we expect from such a polynomial we expect that such a polynomial if we construct then this should be uh, close to the function f naturally at x 0 the function value is 0. So, at x 0 and several so the derivative up to order n are equal, but in general also we expect that because of these conditions that this polynomial of degree n will somehow in some form will represent the function f. So, now the question is how to construct such a polynomial. So, we assume we assume here a general polynomial of degree n. So, we take that c uh, p n x is c 0 and c 1 x minus 0, c 2 x minus 0 square, c 3 x minus 0 cube plus c n x minus x 0 n. So, in this special form we have taken this polynomial because of the convenience to evaluate these unknowns c 0, c 1 and c 2, but one can also assume any general polynomial of degree n. So, now we want to find these coefficients here c i s based on the conditions which we have set or we wish to have that this up to nth order derivative of this polynomial at the point x 0 must be equal to the respective derivatives of the function at the same point x 0. So, having this condition first we note that the first derivative of this polynomial here is equal to. So, once we this is a constant. So, this will be equal to 0 and then we take uh, the second term which will be uh, having here x there. So, we will get this c 1 out of this. Similarly, from here we will get 2 times c 2 and x minus x 0, then we will get here 3 times c 3 and so on. Then if we move further, then the second derivative. So, out of this first derivative we can again differentiate this. So, we will get 2 c 2 here 3 uh, times 2 into c 3 and so on and then we can repeat this process further to get the nth order derivative. So, in the nth order derivative because this was a nth order polynomial we will get only a constant term which we will see here the factorial n and the coefficient the c n uh, will 
come in the expression here and there will be no x term present because the polynomial was degree n and we have differentiated n times. So, having this what we get out of uh, the first condition when we substitute because our condition says the polynomial value at x 0 must be equal to the function value at x 0 and further derivatives up to order n. So, from the functional value we will get here p n x 0 and is equal to all these terms will vanish and we will get only c 1. So, p n uh, sorry from the from the polynomial itself when we substitute x is equal to x 0 we will get c 0 as p n x 0 and p n x 0 is f n x 0. So, we get the c 0 as f x 0 here. The second when we substitute in this first derivative. So, we will get c 1 as the first derivative of the function the c 2 again from this condition. So, we will get the second derivative at x 0 divided by this factorial uh, 2 sorry. So, factorial 2 here and then the c n will be the nth derivative at x 0 divided by factorial n. So, having these coefficients now what we have we have the polynomial the polynomial says that this p n x will be f x 0 which was c 0 there and all these coefficients are substituted here. So, this is what we call the Taylor's polynomial of order n. Now, if we go through the example here and construct the Taylor's polynomial of the exponential function for example, e power x around x is equal to 0. So, the p 0 x the degree 0 polynomial only the first term will be present there and e power 0. So, e power 0 will be just 1. So, the polynomial of degree 0 will be simply 1 and if we plot this. So, this is the green uh, plot here of the exponential function and this polynomial of degree 0 is just a constant line. So, the straight line going through this uh, 0 1 point. And if we compute the polynomial of degree 1, so we will get the this f x 0 as 1 and then we have the derivative here e power x the derivative will be e power x and then at x is equal to 0 this will be again 1. So, we have the polynomial of degree 1 as 1 plus x which is plotted here. So, it is again a straight line with slo slope 1 and now if we continue this process. So, we can evaluate p then p 3. So, p 3 again we have plotted here with this uh, curve and then going further. So, we will get like p 5. So, for example, if we plot here p 5 then this p 5 if you see it is pretty close to the exponential function in a in a very wide range of uh, or, or in the in a wide interval around this uh, point 0 which was uh, the point of this expansion here. And if we move further for the uh, polynomial of degree 6 or 7, then we will be moving close closer to the exponential function and that is the idea of the Taylor's polynomial. So, you can by increasing the, the degree of the polynomial, we can approximate our function as good as we like and we will discuss on these further. So, what is the relation of the Taylor's polynomial and the function that means, because this Taylor's polynomial were representing the uh, Taylor functions to some approximation. So, now we will denote this r n x as the difference uh, between the values of the given function and the constructed polynomial p n x. So, in this case what we mean this that r n x we define this difference of the function and the polynomial p n x. And in this case now the r n x is called the remainder because this is uh, the difference between the actual value of the function minus the, the polynomial value at uh, the point x. So, now the question is the how to evaluate this r n x and to go further for the evaluation we first note that the r n at x 0 because f x 0 minus p n x 0 and by construction this polynomial at x 0 is equal to the function value at x 0. So, this is 0 and the, the first derivative the same thing. So, the first derivative of uh, f at x 0 is equal to the first derivative of the polynomial at x 0. This was the construction of this polynomial. So, all these nth order derivative 
are equal. So, in this case therefore, this R n at point x or the first derivative at point x naught, the n th derivative at point x naught all are equal to 0. So, we have these conditions or n x. Now, we consider another function here which is uh, g x which is g x x minus x 0 power n plus 1. So, this function has also the property if we notice this that g at x 0 will be 0 in fact, the first derivative because n plus 1 and x minus 0 power n that will also become 0 at at the point x 0 and so on. So, we can continue this uh, differentiation here up to the um, nth order and all these derivatives at point x 0 will be 0. So, what condition we have now that g the kth order derivative at x 0 is equal to 0 up to the order n and g n plus 1 is nothing but the factorial n. So, we have here two functions one is r n x and the another one is g x. They have a similar properties here that all these uh, derivative up to order n they vanish. So, in this case if we take the x a point in the interval and suppose that x is bigger than x 0 we can also assume that x is less than x 0 and now we apply the Cauchy man mean value theorem for these two functions the r n function and the g function in this interval x 0 to x. And now remember what was the Cauchy mean value theorem that you have this function r n x minus the r n x 0 divided by g x minus uh, g x 0 is equal to their ratio of their derivatives at some point xi 1 and g prime at xi 1. Now, if we notice that the r n at x 0 is 0 and also the g at x 0 is 0. So, we have this result that r n x over g x is equal to the ratio of their derivative at some point xi 1 in this interval x 0 and x. We can continue this process. So, further if we apply again the Cauchy mean value theorem for the derivatives r n derivative and g derivative in the interval x 0 and xi 1. So, what we will get? We will get because this first derivatives are also 0. So, simply we will get this result that r n x divided by g x is equal to the r n the double derivative over the double derivative of g. Now, the sum point in between this interval which we have considered from x 0 to xi 1. And now, we can continue this process further for the next derivative. So, applying this Cauchy mean value theorem further what we will get? We can go up to the n plus 1 at derivative because up to n at derivative r n and g both are 0. So, we will end up with this term and then here this xi n plus 1 uh, lies between x 0 and this xi n and there was a continuity up to x there. So, what do we get out of this r n x is equal to this r n the n plus 1 at derivative divided by this g n plus 1 the nth this here the n th derivative of this g n plus 1 at derivative was the factorial n plus 1. So, therefore, this factorial n plus 1 term came here and then uh, we have this g x which was the function x minus x 0 power n plus 1 and this xi which is introduced uh, here xi n plus 1 now we have replaced just by xi it lies somewhere between this x 0 and and the point x. So, which is written here the xi lies between x 0 and x. So, now we note that this r n x which we have defined that was the difference between the function f x and p n x. So, if we take the n plus 1 at derivative here of this remainder term the n plus 1 at derivative of this f minus the n plus 1 at derivative of this p is equal to the n plus 1 at derivative of 
x because the n plus 1 at derivative of n and p n was the polynomial of degree n. So, if we take the n plus 1 at derivative this term will become 0 and we have this r n n plus 1 x is equal to f n plus 1 x. And now, we can substitute in our formula which was the r n plus 1 here. So, we have substituted now this value of this r n plus 1 as f n plus 1 xi. Well, so now we got the polynomial here which is uh, the remainder term the r n x which is the Lagrange form of the remainder. This term we can also rewrite this remainder form in this form. So, this uh, xi which appear there we have just replaced by this x 0 plus theta x minus x 0 this theta lies from 0 to 1. So, here if theta is close to 0 then this uh, argument here is moving to x naught when theta goes to 1 this argument here goes to uh, simply x. So, this the argument of this f lies between x 0 and x. So, it has the same similar meaning what the other form has. So, we can rewrite this Lagrange form of the remainder in this form as well. The Taylor's theorem or the Taylor's formula now if you summarize we have the function f x which can be expanded in this form f x 0 f prime x 0 x minus x 0 up to this nth order term and plus this remainder term which we have just derived has this form which is called the Lagrange form of the remainder. So, in the special case when we take n is equal to 0. So, that means this up to the order 1 we have to write this remainder term. So, we get this f prime xi divided by factorial 1 and then we have this x minus uh, either a or the x 0 whatever we consider. So, then this x the, the xi lies between this a and x and in this case we get uh, this form of, of the Taylor's theorem which was which was the Lagrange form mean value theorem. So, this is a special case of the mean value theorem which we have seen just by putting n is equal to 0 in this case. Some remarks. So, if we set x 0 is equal to 0 the point of expansion in this Taylor's formula then it is called the Maclaurin's formula. And in the Taylor's formula if this remainder goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. So, this is an important uh, important remark here if this remainder goes to 0 as n goes to infinity uh, then we can write down that Taylor's formula in the form of the series. So, f x 0 and so on you can continue for infinitely term and this is called the Taylor series. So, for x is equal to 0 if we set this x 0 is equal to 0 then this is called the Maclaurin series. So, what we have seen this the last remark again. So, it is necessary and sufficient for the convergence of the Taylor's or the Maclaurin series that r n x goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. Because there are examples of smooth functions even. So, smooth means we have the derivatives of, uh, of whatever order we like, but their Taylor series diverges everywhere other than the point of expansion because the point of expansion the series will uh, have the value same as the, the function as per the construction. So, and there are the examples also of the smooth functions whose Taylor series converges to some other function. And for instance, you take this example f x is equal to e power minus 1 over x square and the 0 here. So, x not equal to 0 and x is equal to 0. So, in this case one can easily show that f n x at 0. So, if we take the derivative of this function here e power minus 1 over x square which uh, I am not doing these calculations, but one can easily compute that all uh, the derivatives of any order of this function at 0 will be 0. And then we if we write the Taylor series or rather Maclaurin series around x is equal to 0 then we will get because all the derivatives are 0. So, we will get 0 plus 0 into x 0 into x square and so on. And then what we see here whatever x 
we keep the Maclaurin series is giving 0. That means, the series converges whatever x the series is just the 0, but it does not converge to the function. So, the function was for x not equal to 0 e power minus 1 over x square. So, it is a very simple example where we can see that these Maclaurin or Taylor series they do not con, uh, converge to the function. Now, let us uh, just uh, take this example of the Maclaurin series of e power x. Now, again note that. So, whatever derivative we take for this function exponential, it is just the exponential x and at 0 we have uh, the value 1. So, for all values of uh, n all the derivatives of this uh, function exponential function is 1. So, we can easily uh, write down this Maclaurin uh, theorem that exponential x is equal to 1 plus x plus x square by factorial 2 all the derivatives are 1 and x n power factorial n plus r n x. So, the r n x is the remainder term which we have just seen the remainder term is x minus x 0 power n plus 1 and divided by the factorial n plus 1 and the n plus 1 derivative at some point uh, which is x 0 plus theta x minus x 0. So, here if we uh, substitute this x 0 is equal to 0 then we get this remainder x power n divided by factorial n and e power theta x and theta is between 0 and 1. So, now we will see what happens to this r n x as n goes to infinity. If this is the case, if r n x goes to infinity uh, 0 as n goes to infinity, then we can write down the Mac, uh, Maclaurin series of exponential function x. So, here again we note that this is the Maclaurin's theorem. So, if this term goes to 0 as n goes to infinity, in this case we can write down this exponential function as a series. So, we can remove this r n x and then we can continue with the further terms as a series. So, let us just check. So, this is the r n x the remainder term x power n plus 1 divided by this factorial n plus 1 the exponential uh, theta x and if we take the absolute value of this remainder term as x power n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial e power theta x, then we notice that this e power theta x for whatever given x this will be a finite quantity. So, this will not disturb because there is no n term here. So, if we can now focus on this term that what will happen when n goes to infinity. We should notice that when x uh, when n goes to infinity, so this becomes infinity and here whenever this uh, x is for example, uh, a large number greater than 1, then this term is also going to infinity. So, we cannot simply say that what will happen to this term when n goes to infinity. So, we have to carefully check this limit that what will happen to this term when n goes to infinity. So, what we consider for a fixed value of x, we can always whatever x, x could be a very large number, but we can find a natural number n such that the absolute value of this x is greater than n. So, whatever x we take here, then this n the big n we take greater than the absolute value of this x. Having this, we will also consider one more n, the small n term which is appearing there in the formula. So, which is bigger than this number n as well. Now, we consider this term modulus x power n plus 1 over factorial n plus 1. This factorial n plus 1 is the product of n plus 1 n up to 1 and the we have here modulus x power n plus 1. So, we can uh, write down in the form of the product as so factorial x divided by 1 factorial x again divided by 2 and so on we can continue now just look at this term here which have appear after this n minus 1 terms so modulus x divided by n here also this absolute value x divided by n plus 1 and so on 
So, this term here absolute value of x divided by n. So, out of this expression what we see the absolute value of x divided by this n is less than 1. And now, if we assume if we assume this as a number q. So, we have a q here and this is in fact divided by n plus 1. So, this is less than q and all other terms here are less than q. So, again you note that this n was bigger than n. So, we have gone up to this n plus 1 term. So, this with this n will be somewhere in the middle and now this q what we have noticed because the absolute value of x divided by n is less than 1. So, what we see now we can replace this equality by the inequality. So, less than equal to because here we have replaced by q and this one is also replaced by q though it is less than uh, q this is also less than q all these terms are less than q. So, now how many q's we have here. So, n minus 1 terms are already there and then the total terms were n plus 1. So, if we can uh, rewrite now the total term n plus 1 and already these terms are n minus 1. So, n plus 1 minus n uh, minus 1. So, this number here is n minus n and minus 2 and modulus s n minus 1 over factorial n minus 1. And now, we can take a limit here in this case and q is less than 1 and when n goes to infinity. So, this n goes to infinity this n here it goes to infinity and q is less than 1 then this goes to 0 and here some some fixed number is is appearing. So, this everything goes to 0. So, this absolute value of this uh, uh, remainder term which goes to 0. So, what we have seen that this remainder term which was a part of the remainder term is less than uh, which uh, a term which goes to 0 as n goes to infinity and we can conclude that the remainder goes to 0. So, these are the references which were used for preparing these lectures and the conclusions. So, what we have learned today is the Taylor's formula and very important uh, topic in the differential calculus. So, a function which is uh, smooth enough we can write down as f x 0 f derivative x 0 x minus x 0 and so on plus this r n x term which is called the remainder term and this is one form of the remainder uh, term f power the n th plus 1 derivative divided by n plus 1 at factorial x minus x 0 n plus 1 and what we call this the polynomial term we call the Taylor's polynomial the whole result this uh, is called the Taylor's formula. And then we have also observed that when R n the remainder term goes to 0 as n goes to infinity then we can write down uh, this Taylor's formula as in the terms of a series which is called the Taylor series. So, that is all thank you for your attention.